Clip envelopes are a powerful tool which allow live users to embed time-based device or plug-in parameter modulations within an audio or MIDI clip. However, people might easily mistake clip envelopes for clip automation. This is understandable, since at first glance it would appear as if there is little difference between creating a clip envelope and creating clip automation. Both of these processes create a user-defined change in a parameter over a specified period of time. But there are a few key differences, and those differences are what give clip envelopes their unique power. Automation breakpoints and envelopes, such as the ones you would create within a clip and session view, are defined values tied to a fixed moment of time. For example, in this clip, I've chosen to automate the frequency parameter of an instance of auto filter so that it moves from low to high over the span of two measures. All points on this automation envelope are absolute values, meaning that the automated parameter, again in this case frequency, will strictly adhere to the values indicated by this line. Once this automation has been written, the device control will not be able to be changed during that time period. unless you override the data. At this point, it would just stay in the last input value until I rewrite or re-enable that automation. Clip envelopes don't behave in exactly the same way. Like automation envelopes, a parameter is altered over a period of time, but clip envelopes output relative values, not absolute ones. Clip envelopes modulate or change the device control over a user-specified range. This clip has the same envelope, but it's controlling a clip envelope instead of an automation envelope. The result sounds the same. But it's not forcing a defined value like automation would, and therefore the device control can still be freely manipulated to enable further variations. Listen as I change the frequency value. No matter what I change this value to, the sweeping motion is still occurring, but over a different range. Making these changes doesn't override the envelope. It may seem like a subtle difference with limited applications, but I find that the ability to continually alter a device control while maintaining a predetermined parameter change effect affords users additional layers of control and flexibility not offered by traditional automation. In the next video, I will demonstrate this process and provide practical examples to employ in your live projects. I'd like to venture beyond the theoretical discussion of clip envelopes from the previous video with a practical example. To do so, I'm going to attempt to recreate the same basic filter cutoff effect by utilizing a clip envelope. I'll start by opening the envelopes box by clicking on this E button. The clip view area expands to show all of the available options and parameters for working with clip envelopes. It's important to note an important change in Live 9 with respect to how this editing area works. In previous versions of Live, clicking on this E would open up the envelopes box and clip envelopes were instantly available for editing. Clicking on this E will still open up the envelopes box, but now the editing area defaults to clip automation. This is a new feature found only in Live 9. Clip envelopes are now accessed by selecting the appropriate parameter automation option in the control chooser, and then right-clicking in the clip view and selecting show modulation. The parameter will now show in the control chooser dropdown. The word modulation will be added just so it can be distinguished from clip automation for the same parameter. By the way, you'll notice I keep throwing the words modulate or modulations around. A modulation is simply a change that continually cycles between a high value and a low value. After selecting the frequency parameter for modulation, the clip view will display a horizontal red line in the middle of the waveform. This visually represents the audio clip. If I create a breakpoint at the start and drag it all the way down, and another at the end and drag it all the way up, it would appear, at least visually, as if I have created the ascending sweep I was looking for. But take note of a very small but very important detail. The breakpoint values are not shown as frequency values as they would if it were an automation line. Rather, the display indicates percentages. Why? Because clip envelopes do not change the specific value of the frequency parameter. Rather, it modulates the parameter value up or down 
using the parameter value I've chosen as a starting point. Allow me to break that down further. I'll head back to the auto filter device and change the frequency value to around 500 Hertz. Now I will double click on the clip and look at the clip envelope again. Remember that line I started with in the center before we added breakpoints? That line represents a 0% change in the parameter value. So if I delete these breakpoints and return the line to its starting point in the middle, there would be no change in the frequency and it would stay at 500 Hertz. Now if I add the breakpoints back and raise the N1 to its highest level, you'll see that the value shown is 50%, meaning the ramp will increase the frequency value by 50% of the total frequency range. Similarly, if I take that breakpoint and move it below the line to its lowest possible value, it will show a value of negative 50%. This means the frequency value will start at 500 Hertz and drop 50% of the total frequency range. At first, this might seem confusing, but it's actually a very powerful tool because I now have the ability to program a parameter change while still being able to alter the parameter's base value. Look at the auto filter again. This time, I'm going to change the frequency value to its maximum value of 19.9 kilohertz. Returning to the clip envelope view, I will restore that second breakpoint to a positive 50% value. Now I'll play the clip. Nothing happens to the frequency. Why? Because the clip envelope starts at a 0% change, which represents 19.9 kilohertz, and moves up 50%. But 19.9 kilohertz is the maximum value, so it can't move up 50%, or even 5% for that matter. But if I push that breakpoint back down to negative 50%, I will hear the clip start at 0% change, again 19.9 kilohertz, and move down 50% appropriately. The filter doesn't close completely. It'll stop halfway between the entire range of values, so halfway between 19.9 kHz and 26 Hz. If I reset my breakpoints to their original locations, I now have a program filter sweep, but I can continually change where the sweep begins and ends by editing the center value. I'm not locked into anything. I can spontaneously adjust the center point and therefore the range of the frequency sweep at will. It's this feature that can allow for increased creative freedom over traditional automation. In the last video, I demonstrated a quick, useful way to create parameter modulations through clip envelopes. I'd like to build on that foundation by exploring this tool further to help make your music increasingly dynamic and compelling. Here is the drum loop I worked on in the first video. To illustrate the concept behind clip envelopes, I created an envelope to modulate the frequency parameter of an instance of auto filter placed on the track. The original intention was to create a transition effect as the filter's cutoff increased and more high frequency content was allowed to pass through. While I like the impact of this effect, I would like to test out different variations of this cutoff modulation without overwriting or losing the original idea. Essentially, I want to create an alternate take so that I can exploit Sessions View biggest strength, the ability to spontaneously trigger any clip at any time. I'll copy the clip to the next slot within the same channel and quickly rename it to distinguish it from the original. If I look at the clip envelope view, I will see that the envelope I drew before is still here. Conveniently, clip envelope data is retained when copying a clip. I'll listen as I revise this envelope to create a different filter cutoff pattern that appeals to me and which could fit within the context of the track I'm working on. After a few quick adjustments, I think I've found a new envelope that I like. Now I have two clips each with a different variation of the filter opening and closing. I can now trigger either clip while jamming in session view to audition each of the variations against each other, 
or other elements in my track. And it doesn't have to stop here. It's easy to make another copy and create another variation. Now, let's push this one step further and add another clip envelope to modulate a completely different device. I'll start by activating another effect plugin instantiated on this track. In this case, Ableton's Grain Delay. Grain Delay can be a pretty aggressive effect. It can often transform the audio into processing a bizarre spaced out shadow of its former self but only if the wet-dry mix control is above its minimum value of zero. I'd like to add this effect into my existing clips so that I have variation in both the filter frequency and the wet-dry mix percentage of the grain delay effect. Remembering that the control selection process for clip envelopes has been changed in Live 9, I will select grain delay's wet-dry control in the control chooser, and then right-click in the clip view and choose Show Modulation. Now, I should pause here and point out a part of this process that is slightly different from the filter frequency example from the previous video. When I created the clip envelope to modulate frequency, the range of values was displayed as a range of negative 50% to positive 50%, with the default being the middle value of zero. Now take a look as I create a clip envelope for grain delay's wet-dry parameter. The range is 0% to 100% with the default being 100%. Why is this different? Well, the short answer is that Ableton looked at each available parameter and made a judgment call as to which ones are best suited to be modulated positively or negatively from its chosen center value, often called bipolar modulation, or best modulated from a low value to a high value, generally referred to as unipolar modulation. Some of these determinations might be considered subjective, but more often than not, the choice between these two options reflect the nature of a parameter's default value. For example, a virtual pan knob's default position is in the center. 50% of the overall range is to the left, and 50% of the overall range is to the right. This is a perfect candidate for bipolar modulation. Now, look at a typical wet-dry mix knob. The range is typically expressed as 0% to 100% with default value usually at 0%. Generally speaking, you'd be inclined to modulate this kind of parameter from a minimum to a maximum, and therefore in a unipolar fashion. But when it comes to clip envelopes, the end result remains the same. Regardless of the range decided upon by Ableton, clip envelopes always modulate the parameter relative to the current value on that control. I'm going to set the wet-dry mix to 20%. Notice that 20% is not the maximum value on this control. 100% is. But anything over 20% is too pronounced for my tastes. If I add two breakpoints to create a ramp from 0% to 100%, the wet-dry mix will change from the control's minimum value at 0 up to my chosen full value of 20%. I want to drive this point home. 100% of this clip envelope represents 100% of the control's current value, or 20%, not 100% of the control's potential value, which is 100%. I know that this can be very confusing, so just try to think of it this way. The control's current value becomes the maximum value attainable by the clip envelope. So I will now repeat this process so that I have a few variations of the grain delay effect added to the existing variations of the frequency modulations. This process can go on forever and is only limited by your creative impulses. Develop as many variations as you like across as many parameters as you can think of. This will take your jam sessions in session view to a whole new level. In the last video, I demonstrated just a fraction of the power and flexibility of clip envelopes by creating multiple parameter modulations that progress over the length of a clip, or its loop length. But what if the modulation I want to achieve is meant to develop over a time frame that differs from that of my clip? 
what if I want a four bar effect modulation, but my audio clip is only two measures long? In this video, I'm going to delve deeper into clip envelopes and show how to create a modulation that is a different length than the clip it's embedded in. And to achieve this, I'm going to explore a feature known as unlinked envelopes. I'll head back to my initial drum loop where I created a short transition effect by modulating the frequency parameter of auto filter. Notice that the clip envelope is the same length as the drum loop, two measures long. That's because clip envelopes default to a linked state. Simply put, the default envelope length is dictated by the clip length. But what if I don't want the filter to open up that quickly? I think that the transition could have a greater impact if the high frequency content of the loop increased slowly over the span of four measures. I'll start as always by double clicking on my audio clip to open the clip view area. Again, clicking on the E will open the envelope editor if it's not already showing. Because I already have a clip envelope established, I can choose to view it by selecting the proper device in the device chooser and then the appropriate parameter in the control chooser. In this case, I'll return to the frequency modulation control of AutoFilter. While I have your attention in this area of the screen, I'd like to point something out that might save you some head scratching in the future. It's really, really important to double check that you have selected the appropriate device in the device chooser drop down box. And here's the reason why. Some devices may have identically named parameters. For example, if I had a ping pong delay and a reverb on the same track, both effect processors will show a dry, wet parameter available in the control chooser dropdown. Notice a box on the bottom left labeled loop. Clicking this button will toggle between a linked envelope and an unlinked envelope. But what does that even mean? Linked, which is the default state, means that the duration of my clip envelope will match or be linked to the duration of my clip's length. If I have a one measure clip and the clip envelopes are linked, then my clip envelope will be one measure. If I adjust the starter endpoints of the clip, the clip envelope will be edited accordingly. The same goes for a clip with loop engaged. If your clip is looping every two beats, then a linked clip envelope will loop every two beats. It's as simple as that, but I want a four bar filter sweep over a looped two bar clip. And that's where the unlinked option comes into play. I'll toggle this button to unlinked. Then I have complete freedom to set the clip envelope's length and loop options independently from the clip itself. It's kind of like having two clips in one, an audio clip and a control clip. Notice that once the button gets switched to unlinked, the controls on the right side have suddenly become available for editing. These boxes, which look exactly like their counterparts in the middle section of clip view, allow you to set the clip envelope's start and end points. The duration of my parameter modulation is now totally up to me. You'll also see that the audio waveform has disappeared. Don't worry, that's completely normal. The waveform was only there to provide a visual guide while drawing your envelope. But now the envelope is unlinked and therefore a reference to the length of the original audio is irrelevant. Now it's time to change the clip envelope's length to four bars by increasing the end value to the beginning of the fifth measure. If I head over to the sample display area, and try to zoom out, I can still only see two measures. That's because the clip envelope's loop option is still engaged and set to two measures. I need to change that as well. Now I can zoom out and see the area available for drawing envelopes has increased to four measures. I can now edit my envelope as I see fit. I'll trigger the clip to test it out. Notice that the audio region continues to loop every two measures, just as it has been set up originally, but the clip envelope follows its own path and performs the filter sweep over its own four measure length. And just like the clip envelope's length, once unlinked, the clip envelope's loop settings are also independent from the audio clip itself. This quick example represents the fundamental concept behind unlinking the envelopes, but this is just scratching the surface. I could add clip envelopes for as many parameters as I can think of in as many clips as I want with any duration I choose. This allows me to develop extraordinarily complex sounds from just a single boring one measure audio clip. Previously, I created a looping four bar filter sweep over a looping two bar audio clip. 
Although the clip envelope and the audio are different lengths, it still results in an endlessly repeating phrase. I don't want to bore my audience, so I will create a few clip envelopes that have different lengths from the original clip and different lengths from each other. And to make it truly special, I will use clip envelope loop durations that are not mathematically related to each other. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. I'll start by adding another FX processor. And in this case, I've chosen the Roam preset in Resonators. Once active, you'll hear that the effect is pretty intense. I'm searching for something a bit more subtle, and I'll get there by using the wet-dry control. As always, to get a clip envelope started for a parameter, I need to choose it in the control chooser and then select Show Modulation in the Clip View area. As I start drawing envelopes, notice that I am creating more or less random modulations. I want the resonator effect to have some movement that's not linear. I'm hoping to generate musical interest by forcing the listener's attention to follow the seemingly random changes. But at the end of the day, the combination of this new two-measure clip envelope with the four-measure filter sweep and the two-measure audio loop is still a repeating phrase. It might be a more interesting, complex repeating phrase, but it's a repeating phrase nonetheless. So how can I force continual variation without constant interaction? Easy. First, I'll unlink the envelope and set the clip envelope endpoint to something completely unrelated to the other looping components. Then I'll activate the loop button and increase the length so it corresponds to the new endpoint. I've randomly chosen to extend this clip envelope's length to three and a half measures long and a loop length to match. But I've only altered the clip envelope for the first bar. I need to fix that first. I'll zoom out to make sure that the entire clip envelope editing area is within view and return to my crazy haphazard envelope drawing technique. Again, the randomness here is to force continuous variation in the audio. So what have I actually done? I've created another clip envelope, but this one doesn't repeat after one bar, or even after four bars, or even after some number that is a multiple of those lengths. So the combination of the filter sweep and the resonator mix loop will almost never sync up in a repeating fashion. I'll keep going and modulate the resonator's decay parameter over another random and unrelated length. In this case, five and a half measures. I'll start drawing some additional random envelopes. Now I have three effects modulating over three completely different unrelated durations, pushing my clip farther into continuously evolving territory. The more clip envelopes I add, which are unlinked and have durations unrelated to each other, the less often my listeners will be confronted with repetition of the same character or timbre of that element within my track. Most often, clip envelopes are associated with the modulation of audio effect device parameters, but Ableton allows the modulation of clip parameters as well, including things like volume and transposition. The actual parameters available for modulation are dependent on the warp mode selected within the clip, so you'll have to choose your warp mode carefully to enable clip envelopes for certain parameters. For more information on warp modes, make sure you check out Linda's Ableton Live Essential Training. This clip was warped via Beats Mode. Beats Mode warps audio in a manner not unlike a slice mode in a traditional sampler or the propeller head's recycle rex file format. This means each segment of audio can be treated individually when it comes to the transposition of its pitch parameter via clip envelopes. The setup is mostly the same as an effects control. I'll head directly to the device chooser and select clip. The control chooser below now displays all of the available clip parameters which can be manipulated with a clip envelope. Again, the selections in this dropdown change depending on the warp mode. So if you don't see what you're looking for, double check you have the correct mode enabled. I'll select transposition. I'll unlink the envelope and set my endpoint and loop length to an arbitrary value. 
By the way, just as it is all throughout live, you can edit these loop and end values by dragging the flag markers back and forth over the timeline. This is often a lot easier than entering values into the boxes, especially if you don't need precision. Modulating the transposition can create a vast range of colors and characters. Clip envelopes that shift between extreme values will create extreme impact. Conversely, varying the modulation over one or two semitones will create subtle movement. Of course, this really only applies to non-melodic content like this drum loop. Modulating the transposition over a musical region will obviously change the notes. This is a great tool in working with melodic content, which can lead to some inspired composition and arrangement changes. But when working with atonal content, there can be greater freedom because you aren't constrained by musical notes or scales. I'm going to start drawing my envelope, and I'm going to vary between small subtle shifts and huge sweeping changes. The audible impact is immediate. I've managed to push a boring two-measure drum loop into a glitched out slice of craziness, and the best part is that the offset durations of the clip envelopes mean that the audience will be listening to a new combination of these changes throughout the entire arrangement. I did one more thing to enhance this drum track. I've used the same technique on the clip's volume parameter. I've made small, precise changes to the volume clip envelope. What I can now hear is a constant change in the gate or decay of the individual beats. So by adding two basic, easy to create clip envelopes, I've transformed an ordinary drum loop to something extraordinary.